Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing cholesterol biosynthesis. Okay, right, so in the previous video what we did is we completed stage 3. We had completed the construction of this squalene molecule here, okay? And what we're now going to do is use this squalene molecule to create cholesterol. Now, this final step of the reaction is called stage 4, okay? Uh, but we're not going to see the full thing of stage 4. We are going to see how we get from squalene to another molecule called lansosterol. Okay, but then we're not going to look at how you could go from lansosterol to cholesterol because there's about 20 different steps. Okay, so we're just going to draw an arrow between lansosterol and cholesterol and say, there you go. Okay, but we will see how you get to lansosterol, which is a very similar structure to cholesterol, and you can then imagine how you can go from lansosterol to cholesterol. Okay, right. So, firstly, uh, the first thing we need to do is redraw the squalene molecule in a slightly more convenient way, and this is the most difficult bit of what we're going to do, understanding this next bit. So, on this page, the first thing I'm going to do is redraw out the squalene molecule, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to change the way we draw it uh, to make it look more like cholesterol, okay? And this is quite magical. Okay, right, so... Let's start off down here. So, here is our first isoprene molecule within the squalene molecule. Okay, then we have our second isoprene molecule within the squalene molecule, which is here. Okay, so there's our second isoprene molecule here. Okay, then we're going to have our third isoprene molecule within our squalene molecule, so another one here. Okay, like so, and then this will be attached to the upside-down equivalent, basically, so, like so, okay, uh, so this um, was our two carbons of this isoprene, and now we've got the two equivalent ones here, okay, and then you'll have a double bond there, this group coming off like that, and then here is the fourth isoprene molecule, which is upside-down now, compared to uh, these are ones that we drew here. Okay, and then what's going to happen is we're going to have another one of these, like so. Okay, and we've got another double bond there. And then finally, our sixth isoprene molecule, which will be over here. Okay, so there now is our full squalene molecule. I admit that it gets a little bit more squashed as you go up, uh, but never mind. Okay, now I'm going to talk you through how we're going to redraw this then, and we'll do this with colour coding, because I think colour coding it will make it nice and simple. So, we're going to start with this little bit here, okay, which I've now coloured in red. So what we're going to do is we're going to move that down now, we'll have it here, and this is going to be redrawn like so. Okay, so here is this double bond in the middle here, okay. And uh, these are these two methyl groups that we've got one, two there. Okay, so that's that red bit. Next up, we'll have this portion in green here. Okay, so we're now going to reorient that as well relative to everything. So we're going to redraw it like so. So this is this first carbon here, then this one here. Okay, then we'll have a methyl group sort of sticking out over there. That's that methyl group. And then we'll have our double bond here, and you can hopefully start to see how this is starting to come round to looking like uh, the rings of cholesterol. Okay, so there in green is this portion here. Okay, next portion up will go for blue, so we'll highlight this portion, this portion, all the way up to that, all of that can be represented in blue down here. Okay, then we'll have this first carbon in blue here, second carbon in blue here, third carbon in blue here, okay, then we've got that methyl group sticking off, and then we've got the double bond here, okay, like so. So that's our blue portion, and we're now starting to form the B steroid ring here, that's in blue, okay. The next portion we're going to have is in turquoise, so this portion is in turquoise, this portion is in turquoise, this portion, this por whoops, this portion, and this portion here. Okay, so all of that's in turquoise. So then we've got one carbon here, that's, th that's the first turquoise carbon. 
then the second turquoise carbon will be up there, the third turquoise carbon will be up there, okay, then we've got a fourth turquoise carbon, that's the double bond there, so I have put a double bond there, and then we've got a methyl group coming off to the side, so that's all of the turquoise stuff drawn there, like so. Okay, so now we want to continue on, we have this portion here, so we're continuing with this carbon here, so we're now going to have this carbon here coming off here, and let's highlight the next portion in orange. So all of this portion that I'm now highlighting in orange will go forward with this portion here. So this is the first orange portion here. Okay, so that's that first carbon. Then we're going to form this five-membered ring now. So here is this uh, second carbon here, the third orange carbon. Then we've got this double bond, so we're going to have that there. Okay, and then we've got this methyl group sticking off up there. Okay, so all of this is the orange portion here. And hopefully you can see that we're forming the D-ring there. Okay, and then the final portion will have coloured in in pink. Okay, so all of this portion up here, this final portion, this can be in pink. And this is going to be that little chain that you have coming off the uh, D-carbon of the... D, sorry, the D-ring of uh, the cholesterol steroid structure. Okay, so here is that first pink carbon, the second pink carbon, the third pink carbon, the double bond here, and then you have those two methyl groups coming off after the double bond. Okay, so it's all looking hopeful, and all we have done is redraw the squalene molecule a different way, and now, suddenly, it looks as though we can actually get cholesterol out of this. Okay, so now on to some reactions then. So we've just rearranged, well, we've just redrawn our squalene molecule. Now we want to see what the next chemical reaction that's going to occur to our squalene molecule is. So basically the next enzyme that is going to act on the squalene molecule is called squalene monoxygenase. Okay, and there's two O's there, so it's mono and then oxygenase. Okay, and basically what this is going to do is it's going to bring in an oxygen molecule, okay, so a two oxygen atoms double bound to one another, okay. It's also going to bring in a molecule of reduced NADP, okay, so here is our reduced NADP, and uh, with that reduced NADP we're also going to bring in a proton. So remember, the uh, NADP carries a hydride anion, so a hydrogen atom with an extra electron. If we bring in a proton as well, we're effectively bringing in two hydrogen atoms here. Okay, right. And what you can imagine doing is breaking that double bond between the two oxygens, and this time we really are breaking both bonds. Okay, so in these two covalent bonds, each oxygen atom will give an electron into each covalent bond. So overall, you've got four electrons being shared here, two from each oxygen. Imagine sending two electrons back to this oxygen and two back to this oxygen to create two oxygen atoms. Bind one of those oxygen atoms to the two hydrogen atoms to create a molecule of water. Okay, so you'll produce a molecule of H2O here. Okay, that leaves one oxygen atom here that you're going to now bind to your squalene structure. Imagine breaking the second of the two bonds uh, within this double bond in this red region down here. So break one of those covalent bonds. Okay, the one that I haven't coloured in, we can imagine. Send one electron back to each carbon. So this carbon now has a free electron, this carbon now has a free electron. What you can then do is bind this oxygen atom to those carbons. So you can form basically a um, single bond here to an oxygen atom and then a single bond here to an oxygen atom to create a little triangle here. Okay, so let's now draw this structure out again when we don't have any colour uh, on it. Okay, so I hope that I've now convinced you that you can redraw the squalene molecule. Whoops, I've just made a terrible mistake. That double bond should not be there. We're trying to draw out... In fact, I might start again. I'll just go over here. Right, okay, so forget that bit. That went horribly wrong. So we now have this special triangle here, okay, where we have the two carbons bound to each other and both of them have a link to the oxygen. Okay, then we've got these two methyl groups still intact there, so that's that portion. Then we've got this portion coming off like this, a double bond there, a methyl group there, and then the second ring starting here, 
Okay, we have a double bond there, even though it's difficult to see through the colour. Oh, whoops, you can't even see this at all. Um, so we've got a double bond there, even though it's difficult to see it through the colour. Okay, and then we've got a methyl group coming off there. Then we've got this next portion of this ring here. Okay, a double bond there, methyl group coming off there, and then the starting of this um, five-membered ring over here, this D-ring. And then you've got a double bond there, a methyl group coming up there, da, 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 double bond there, like so. So that's what we've got now, okay? So what's this called? What is this product that we have just created? Well, this is now called squamine 2 free epoxide, okay? Because we have this epoxide link, which is basically uh, where you've got this triangle like so between the second and the third carbons of squamine. So there's squamine 2 free epoxide. Okay, right. So, the next reaction now is going to involve uh, breaking that epoxide link, which is incredibly reactive. It, as you can see, it doesn't look particularly stable. Triangles don't generally have stable chemical structures. Okay, so, what we're going to now do is we're going to turn this into something that looks more steroid-like. So we're going to actually join all the rings together because at the moment they're not joined together. It's still a linear structure. What we now want to do is cyclize it basically. Turn it into four cyclic uh, rings basically joined together. Okay, so this enzyme which is going to catalyze this is going to be squalene cyclase. Okay, and squalene cyclase also has another name, okay, because it's actually going to catalyze two reactions. It's going to catalyze this first uh, cyclation reaction, and it's going to catalyze another reaction afterwards. So it's also named after the next reaction that it catalyzes, which is um, the production of lans lansosterol. Okay, so it's also called lansosterol synthase. Okay, so either squalene cyclase or lansosterol synthase, whichever you prefer. And basically what's going to happen now in this next reaction is that uh, I will now show you an electronic flow diagram because really there's no simpler way of doing it than showing the electronic flow diagram in this case. So what we're going to do is use those two electrons in that second of the two bonds. So hopefully you can see that there's a double bond between those two carbons. We're going to use one of those bonds, basically. So we're going to take one of those. We're going to use those two electrons to make a bond between this carbon here and this carbon here. Okay, so we're going to create a new bond in between there. Okay, now in this original bond up here, there were two electrons, one from this carbon and one from this carbon. So basically, the one that belonged to this carbon, that's fine, that's still belonging to that carbon, but the one that belonged to this carbon up here has now been given to this carbon down here. So that's going to leave that carbon up there with a positive charge. So let's draw this as we go along. So here is this group at the top here with the double bond there and the methyl group coming down there. And now we've got a single bond here because we've broken the second of the two bonds. Okay, so that's now got a positive charge as well because it's lost its electron. Okay, and we've now synthesized a new bond between that carbon there and that carbon there. Okay, so we've now got a ring emerging, so that's jolly nice. Right, okay, this means that this carbon here has now got a negative charge. So what's now going to happen is this double bond here, the second of the two bonds in this double bond, is now going to uh, break, basically. Okay, so there are two electrons in there, one from this carbon and one from this carbon. Basically, we're going to take both of the electrons and give them to this carbon, which means this carbon will lose an electron, which will take it back to neutral. And the two electrons in here are going to be used to create a new bond between this carbon and this carbon here. And I'm sorry, that's sort of gone over the methyl group. It wasn't supposed to. It's going between this carbon here and this carbon here. Okay, so the two electrons in this bond, one belong to this carbon and one belong to that carbon. We've nicked the one off that carbon, which doesn't matter because it already had gained one from this carbon up here. And now what we're going to do is give that effectively to this one here, which will give this one now a negative charge. Okay, so let's continue on our structure now. So this is now a single bond here. Okay, then we've got this first ring here. 
Okay, and we've now got a nice new single bond there, and it's important to remember you've still got that methyl group there, and you've still got the methyl group that now is very difficult to see because I've drawn the purple over it that is there. Okay, now that leaves that carbon there with a negative charge. Okay, so what's now going to happen is we're going to take the second of the two bonds in this double bond here, and we're going to take both of the electrons in that second of the two bonds, and we're going to give them back to this carbon, and it's going to form a bond with this carbon here. Okay, so you're going to get a bond formed between that carbon and that carbon. And again, when we do this, the two electrons that we use in this bond, one of them stays with this carbon here, but effectively you've taken one electron from this carbon and given it to this one. That takes this one down to neutral, but it gives this one now the negative charge. Okay, so let's go on with our structure. So we're going to have to start squashing it in a little bit. So we've now got a nice new uh, bond formed between that carbon there and that carbon there, and we've got this methyl group sticking out here. Okay, now of course what's going to happen is this carbon has the negative charge now, so the electrons in this second of the two bonds in this double bond here are going to go and bind to this carbon here. So we're going to give them back to this carbon, and then this carbon is going to use them to synthesize a bond between itself and this carbon here. Okay, right, so let's show that now. So that means this has gone down to a uh, single bond now, and this carbon here, or this carbon here if you like, has lost that extra electron that it had because we've taken it one of the electrons that was in this uh, second of the two bonds in this double bond away from it. Okay, so it goes back to being neutral. Okay, and now what we have done is we've created a uh, bond between this carbon here and this carbon here which creates that final cycle. We've then still got these two methyl groups here, but that leaves this carbon with a negative charge. So what's going to happen is that bond there is going to break and both electrons are going to go back to the oxygen. So remember, originally the deal was that one electron was from the carbon and one electron was from the oxygen. Now the oxygen's taking both, so it's nicked one from that carbon. So that leaves the oxygen then dangling off here with a negative charge, a proton will quickly associate with that oxygen to produce the alcohol group there. Okay, right. So, what is this molecule called? This molecule is called the pre-sterol cation because it has a positive charge, so it's a cation. So whenever you've got a molecule with a positive charge, it's called a cation. Okay, and this is formed by squalene cyclase, or lansosterol synthase. However, lansosterol synthase is going to trigger another reaction now in this pre-sterol cation, so this is just an intermediate, and that's going to turn this pre-sterol cation into lansosterol. Okay, and the reason that you don't have another negative charge somewhere within this molecule is because that proton has come and associated here, because um, that was where the negative charge originally was, on the oxygen. So you might be wondering, how did we go from a neutral molecule, add nothing in, and get a positive charge without having a negative charge somewhere? Well, the thing is, we did add something in. We added a proton in, which is how you overall got this positive charge on this pre-sterol cation. Okay, so that uh, completes our discussion for this video. We'll continue this discussion in the next video, where we'll see how we can convert the pre-sterol cation into lansosterol, and then we'll just sort of say, and now lansosterol goes to cholesterol. Okay, so see you then.